Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 42 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. And this is Niall. And this is Random Movie 871, the wonderful story of Henry Sugar from 2023, so not too long ago. And another sort of unique element to this is only 37 minute long, minutes long. It was released as a quartet of Roald Dahl uh, adaptations by Wes Anderson last year and uh, on Netflix. It's got a meta score of 85 and a user score of 7.4. So it's um, liked a lot by people. Yep. Yep. Uh, what's your favorite Wes Anderson movie? Oh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. I love that movie. I absolutely adore that movie. Yeah, same. I think that would be the one. I haven't actually watched all of his movies, to be honest. Nor have I, but I have seen quite a few. I haven't seen Asteroid City yet. Uh, I'm not sure I want to. Even though it doesn't get completely smashed, um, it doesn't get what you would expect from a Wes Anderson in terms of review. Um which is kind of upsetting. I did see somebody talk about this, saying that this was a return to form post Asteroid City. Right. So maybe yeah. It yeah. It was. It's an. It's an interestingly produced and directed short movie. It, it's unique. It really is. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite Roald Dahl adapted adapted movie? Ooh, see again it's not a Wes Anderson movie <laughs> mm-hmm. the fantastic Mr. Fox is a fantastic uh, movie but then I did like the Iron Giant back in the day mm-hmm. so oh I don't know um, The Witch is fantastic uh, god damn it Matilda was amazing uh, yeah. my friend Danny DeVito um, yeah I uh, I watched Willy Wonka, the original, over the Christmas break. I think that's a fantastic movie. That is. Um, Roald Dahl didn't like it that much, apparently. Uh, oh, he didn't like the... What did he, he not like, like about it? He didn't like Gene Wilder being in it. He wanted Spike Milligan. Oh. And I'm glad it wasn't Spike. I, yeah. I don't get me wrong. I loved Spike Milligan. Um, but Gene Wilder brought something different to it. I think Gene Wilder brought a bit more empathy than you would have got from Spike Milligan. And a lot more layered sort of, what type of person is this person? You know, I yeah, loved, it just chunks yeah. of sinister going on. Yeah, there, you know, as, as they're in the in the weird ass tunnel that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, um, I just love the at the end. He's like, "Good day, to, sir. Good yeah. day to you, sir. Good day." Yeah, that's, I think it's a good day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah, so Gene Wilder, irreplaceable in that movie. Spike Milligan would have been great, but I think it would have brought it down a couple of levels in my estimation. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know if I told, I don't know if I place it number one. I, it, it's a very important place in my heart growing up as a child. The, the team tune at the end of the song, seeing out the movie as Gene Wilder sings the song as they fly away in the glass elevator, it brings, you know, tears of nostalgia to my eyes still. There's some great, great scenes. I think the every time. The Candyman story. He's kind of. He's very. He's very sort of child, sort of weirdo. He's a the Candyman yeah. can <laughs> just throwing candy at all the kids. I yeah. just find it quite a quite unsettling every time he does that song. Uh, so yeah, this was um, this was released last year along with the Swan, the Rat Catcher, and Poison. I haven't watched any of them. I think they're all around the seventeen mark. This one's uh, substantially longer than those, so they're very short stories. And it looks like a lot of the actors are just used multiple, like in this movie, yeah, a yeah, lot of recycled. actors. Yeah, so I think it was just a one big project that they got into. Just a word before, like obviously, obviously with Wes Anderson, cinematography is key and Robert D. Yeoman is the dude that does mm-hmm. all the cinematography for uh, for all his movies. So again, in this one, it's if you're a Wes Anderson fan, you will enjoy it. This is at 11 on this one. Really yeah. Is. Um, in September 2021, Netflix paid $686 million for the Roald Dahl story company. So they're beginning to churn out uh, the okay. stuff. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest. No, no. And, you know, talking about the Grand Print, Grand Budapest Hotel this is the first time that 
Rafe and Ben Kingsley are reunited since uh, Schindler's List, 30 years later. Nice, nice. So that's, that's nice. They don't have any scenes together, but it's I'm sure they uh, had a nice reunite, reunion on, on set. Maybe, maybe there's a reason why they weren't allowed in any scenes together. Some sort of mm. eternal animosity. <laughs> <laughs> eternal Damn you, just... Nazi! <laughs> He was, he was, ben Kingsley wasn't a Nazi, though. No, but Rafe was. Oh, right. Sorry. I keep on forgetting it's, it's Liam Neeson that has the Ben Kingsley scenes. Uh, yeah. It's Liam yeah. Neeson is Schindler. Yeah, he was also a Nazi in the movie. True. Was, yeah, but yeah. a nice one. A nice Nazi. Yeah. He was in the party <laughs> just for, for giggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was just, yeah. Um, yeah, so the nutshell of this summary is the short ontolo- uh, the, the, this short ontology film adapts four of the stories in the Rodell collection. The wonderful story of Henry Sugar and Six More. The main story follows Henry Sugar, who is able to see through objects and predict the future with the help of a stolen book. So basically, I think the first thing, the only thing we talked about before we came on on air was the extremely rapid pace of this movie. Yeah, it it, it doesn't give you a gosh darn second. Because normally as we're watching these movies, I like to slap down a couple of notes and must talk about blah and oh he says so blah 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 and I want to say that later you know when we're discussing it you don't get a second no it was it was apparent within the first few seconds that I couldn't write notes as much as I could I wanted to yeah and and if I was writing something down I've just, I've just missed a paragraph I, mean, I don't know what's happening I have to stop and go back so yeah. uh, so I was trying to write while watching the screen and my, my notes are gibberish <laughs> yeah, same, yeah. <laughs> if i'm honest uh but yeah it, listen in, in, incredibly fun to watch in, in my mind um a, a different taste of movie compared to our last one um well the last one had me feeling despair towards the whole film industry this just remedied a lot of that yeah that's great the way we can just go from one side of swing of the pendulum to the other and oh, yeah. see a master at work to from seeing some idiot trying to do a tv movie um so yeah we we're getting an intro where rafe finds is rolled out in his writing nuke his writing shed and actually i when when the movie started i was like oh i've actually seen this on youtube so, so have you seen I. it yeah yeah but it was rolled out <laughs> yeah it was rolled out <laughs> And it's he's he's so on point, like yeah, um, oh, yeah. And, the, and there's actually a there's a there's a piece of trivia on IMDb about this. Um, Wes seen Rafe, you know, in the corner, basically muttering to himself, and he was going over the the YouTube uh, um, footage in his head, and he was trying to get into character. And he went, "No, no, 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 we're using that. That's amazing. Yes, yeah." Yeah, it was great. It was an, it was dead bang on, and because oh. I re- I remember watching that YouTube video, just wow, he writes everything in pencil and paper in this little little shed he's in his, his garden. He's got his process, and he sticks to it, and it's he's very regimented about it. Obviously, works as well. Oh yeah, yeah. He wrote he wrote some good stuff. Um, okay, so it's, so Roald Dahl basically takes the point of a narrator at the start, but then. Benedict Cumberbatch takes over as a narrator, and yeah. then and then Ben Kingsley takes over as a narrator. There's a lot of narration of things, and I read the actual short story today uh, over a couple of hours, and the movie is very very, uh, what's the word? Honest to the book to the short oh, story. Good, yeah, good. Not a lot of changes at all. The, the, the one of the ma- first major changes is the name of the actual doctor who wrote the story. So in the movie, it's Z Z Z and uh, okay, yeah, they and just then Zatterjee or whatever. Yeah, and then in the, no, and then in the the book, it's like Howard, Doctor Howard. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's Doctor Chatterjee in the movie, and it's, it's yeah, Z yeah. Z Chatterjee. Yeah, yeah. In the movie, it's just uh, in the story, it's just Doctor Howard or something, something like that. So, um, so Dal intros everybody intros intros us all to, sh- to Henry Sugar. He kind of describes him as a bit of a twit, a bit of a you know rich not, boy, not, not evil but not good. Yeah, 
kind of a pointless waste of what, was it, what did he call them like seaweed there's plenty of this type of seaweed yeah. floating on the sea yeah and that's written yeah. in the book as well there's a, a lot of the dialogue Lovely. is just taken from the book yeah it's very nice and it's very interesting that the book is also written in very short sentences a lot oh, really <laughs> yeah so they really punchy. Just, yeah punchy rapid it feels like i did this and then i went to there and then this happened you know wow. that's, yeah, yeah yeah so it's very it's very uh yeah. And while that might sound awful, you know, very short sentences, bang, 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 it really works in this. Yeah. So, like, I came away from it going, it's pretty Is much it... a stage adaptation. It's, oh, yeah, completely. Yeah. It's and, like, and it intentionally so, because yes. the stagehands are, are left in on each scene. And, <laughs> yeah. and every now and then, when the actors will, you know, gesticulate to one of the stagehands to move something, it's. It's beautiful. <laughs> intentionally yeah. theater. It's intentionally theater. It's intentionally a nod to the short sentences in the story. Mm. Yeah. Um, when there's floating people in this, the story, <laughs> there's boxes <laughs> under them. <laughs> but, but this used to great effect. Uh, yeah. It, and it's not limited to just to theater effects. Like it, Obviously, it, it's a movie, so they've got a bit of wiggle room to slap in some effects the, when it saves money, <laughs> which they did. But for the most part, it feels just like being in the theater. Yeah, and like so, they basically the first couple of scenes, you just have this sort of cardboard scenery, and they roll in and they roll out, and props are brought in, and it's just it's very much just like watching a, a stage show in two x fast forward speed, pretty much. Oh yeah. Well, what, what I'd like to just interject here though is one thing that is very apparent for us straight from the start. though, is each individual story segment has a main narrator but they always when they're talking as Roald Dahl they look directly into the camera and speak directly to the viewer uh, which is fantastic and then as they're discussing something with another cast member they're looking directly at them but everything that's Roald Dahl's voice I suppose is right in your eyes uh, which is great yeah this is a, it's a unique sort of movie and the way it's delivered and the way it's presented to the to the viewer you're kind of sucked into it and you kind of have to be it's kind of like a tornado of words yeah. and narration uh so henry sugar he's at this rich bloke's house and he uh finds a little pamphlet uh famous jewish sports stars <laughs> That's, yeah. an air, that's an airplane quote. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not quite that, but yeah. No, no, no. So it's basically The Man Who Sees Without His Eyes by Dr. ZZ Chatterjee. Yeah. And so uh, so then he sits down to write, and then Dev Patel takes over the narration as the doctor. And it's rapid. It's basically the story of them as doctors and Ben Kingsley, <sighs> Imdad Khan, comes in and goes, can you wrap my eyes up, please? Yeah, and, and going, that's, what the hell? And it, it, it gets better at this point. I, I'm, I'm a stunken fanboy of um, Kingsley. I think he's bloody amazing, and he's great in this. Yeah, he's sort of when it gets his his point in talking and narrating, he's sort of nervous and anxious, and it's it's part of his character as the person yeah. in the in the show. So when he's narrating, yeah. he's quite nervous doing it. He's very jittery. So it's, yeah, because because the, the one thing Kingsley isn't is nervous on stage because he started theater well yeah. before he went anywhere near a movie yeah yeah so that are basically he's basically going listen i'm in a i'm in a theater show i do a trick where i can i can see when my eyes are closed but i want doctors to basically put over everything over my eyes uh, because audience doesn't believe me and they never do even when i do do it they're they are they're, they clap and everything but they just don't they don't looking, uh, for, looking for the trick they're looking for the, the trick uh, so the doctors put liquid on his eyes to seal his eyes to eyelids, put dough, puts bread dough on his eyes, <laughs> yeah. and then puts a massive, uh, massive kind of uh, bandage, bandage head, bandage thing. sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> leaves leaves some breathe, leaves some room for his nose to breathe. So he just he just walks out and skips past the trolley and walks down the stairs, and the doctors are chasing him. Hops onto a bike and off he goes. <laughs> On a pole, yeah. yeah. What I love is that the bike is facing into the hospital, but then rotates on a pole, and yeah. he just jumps out. Yeah. <laughs> Off he goes. So Dr. Chatterjee is going, all right, I need to see this show. So he goes to the Royal Palace Hall, where it's shown, and just basically shows the audience and not the show, which is great. It's another choice of Wes Anderson, and has uh, Chatterjee just narrating and describing what he saw, and he uh, he basically goes back 
backstage and goes, I need to talk to you. I need to interview you. I, I need to learn a lot. You. I'll study you. And then it zooms in on his black hair, ear, ear hair again. <laughs> yeah. And he had increasingly or a lot of black ear hair. Um, so then he um, he has an interview with Imdad. So then Ben Kingsley takes over the narration. So we've had we've had Ray Fiennes, we've had Cumberbatch, we've had Dev Patel, and now we've got Ben Kingsley in the narration style. It starts off at flashback. Ben, yeah, it flashed back to a story of how he learned how to uh, do what he needed to do, and uh, he looks looking for the yogi. Uh, so this is the part this is a very nice visual part where the jungle scene is brought in and there's layers of jungle. Um, did your wife watch this with you? She did indeed. She did she know? Russo. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I had. But I was like, oh yeah, I got, I got to write that down. Maybe Colin wouldn't have heard that before. No, no. No, I've got it. No. <laughs> Henri Rousseau, very famous for his jungle things. I thought that there was actually going to be a, a lion or a tiger because he's very yeah. famous for putting faces of lion and tiger. But he didn't well, I that. think that, that was kind of hinted at, though, with the, yeah. the dialogue from Ben Kingsley in that he's going, oh, I'm pretty scared. I'm pretty sure something's rustling down there. Could be the guy I'm looking for. Could be a tiger. Could <laughs> be a tiger. <laughs> So he, uh, he, fi- if he, if he finds a disciple and he chases him through the jungle, then he witnesses the yogi doing his levitation, aka a box underneath him, but not really a box. Uh, and then he yeah. just goes up and goes, I want to learn. And then the yogi throws a rock at him and he goes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. And it cuts back and goes, yeah, I still have the scar on my leg. So he then goes, all right, I need to train you then because I'm sorry for throwing the rock at you. Now, in the short story book, that doesn't happen. This is probably one of the little things that they ah. changed. He basically yells at him and says, get the hell out of here. And But he keeps coming back day after day after day. Gotcha. And then he goes, well, I'm not going to train you. Go to another place and another yogi will train you. So I, I think they made the right choice to sort of break down or keep the story very quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. 20 years pass by and he trains to see stuff yeah, so can- he, he, he yeah. does it by staring at a candle for like x amount of minutes and then focusing only on the image of his brother well, his recently deceased brother at the very start but at the end of it you know he's dead like 20 years or 20 something years yeah. um and for a while he can only focus for like four seconds but then he gets it up to a minute and then he gets five minutes that's when the magic happens yeah and so he uh he seems to to see stuff, and he, uh, he yeah, it, it's 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 shown his progress, and he can see stuff through through his um, through stuff through blindfolds and, yep. and things like that. And he he can read uh, entire books without opening his eyes, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things I don't I, 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 so I I'm getting my short story and my movie confused, but can you remember if during the telling of the story that the yogi told them? If you use your skills to earn money or to try to get famous, or you tell somebody about your your um, skills, you'll die a, a young death. Nope, that was not okay. in the uh, wasn't okay. Person. Well, that's interesting because that's what happens later on. Spoiler alert to um, to to Imdad. He doesn't die young, but he dies quite quickly, and that's what happens in the next scene. When he explains the... Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Okay, that's never really explained, but yeah, okay, no, that makes not. sense. Yeah, it's not explained. So, yeah, so we flash forward then. That's the that's his story, and uh, the two doctors are going, yeah, I'm going to... Let's let's go and watch his performance again. Let's just see this for our eye, same eyes again. I'll take um, uh, Moss from the IT crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Who so I actually yeah. think is kind of out of his depth here a little. Richard Ayoade is, yeah. but thankfully his roles are quite simplistic. Yeah, and even then it's just like, uh, yeah, it's a bit low. It's a low bar you're setting yeah, there. On the same screen as Ben Kingsley, he is certainly out of his depth, yes. Yeah, even Dev Patel, he's like... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a bit, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so basically, Imdad has died. The night performance is cancelled, and that's the end of that flashback within a flashback within a flashback. So we go back, back to Henry the Sugar. Yeah. yeah, it's like Inception. It's uh, as if what I've written down right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we go we go back to 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 Henry Sugar. He takes the book. He says, "I I want to do this because I can make money by looking through cards at casinos." 
And so he uh, he wants to see the cars. He starts practicing visualizing, visualizing his own face as opposed to anybody he loves because he doesn't love anybody but himself. Yep, good move. Yeah. So it's a montage of 11 and a half months of visualizing. And he so tries instead to... of 20, 30 years for um, yeah. Khan. Yeah. Because he but... loves himself so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in the book, it says the yogi, the yogi says there are one or two people in the world that can do this quicker. Then yeah. when he realizes he does this, he's like, going, I'm one of those special people. So same, in sort of, the, the movie. same in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So blending the realities here. <laughs> um, so then there's three years and three months where he gets it down to five seconds per card because that's what you need to do when you're playing blackjack, basically. So he, off he goes and says, all right, let me just try this in a blackjack at the casino. So uh, Jarvis Cocker welcomes him behind the desk as he yeah, goes I into the casino. That. Not the first time Wes Anderson included uh, Jarvis Cocker in a movie either. Oh, where did he use him? He was in the fantastic Mr. Fox playing a uh, guitar. I uh, wonder why he likes to use Jarvis Cocker. Likes the music. Probably. Common people. <laughs> um, so he basically, he it's the, the casino scene isn't really that dramatic or anything. He just, he, he just sees the card and he walks away with uh, $6,000, right? right? Rather interestingly, when he goes in, he looks around and he just has contempt for all the people that he would have originally found his friends. Yes, yes, that's mentioned in the book a bit more too. He's he's, he's been on a journey basically, and mm. learning these skills has made him a different person. So um, he's walking outside, and this is where we get a little meta by going roll Dahl or is it roll the roll Dahl uh, doing narration here? Or is it is it Cumberbatch? I think it's Cumberbatch. Basically Cumberbatch, saying, yeah. if this is if this was a not a real story, then um, I would go home. I would look and get an X ray, and I'd see a blood clot, and I would oh, look die. into the mirror using his newfound skills, yeah. and see that there's a blood clot climbing all its way up to my uh, heart, and I'm yeah. heal over. But this so, yeah, is a real story. <laughs> this is a real story, so that's not what happens. So yeah, so um, he um, so it's not ending. So he um, walks. And he feels unfulfilled after it. He doesn't. He doesn't want the money, so yeah. he starts uh, the next morning. He starts throwing it down onto the, the plebs down below. This leads to one of my favorite, yeah, tiny little scenes. But uh, there's a knock at the door. Then a very yeah. harsh knock at the door, and uh, there's a cop standing outside. And it's our, our good friend um, Ray Fines again. And yeah. He's like, hello, hello, hello. What's this? All? What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, and he's like, What are you doing? What do you mean? I didn't do it illegal. I just chuck money at people. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're a twit. You're just like one of those. Why don't you give it to school, hospitals or orphanages? Yeah, and and he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You got a point. That's that kind of better stupid. idea. Yeah, it's better, better thinking. So there's a sort of a sort of a um. He gets to this plan where yeah, okay, I'll do this uh, casino plan. I'll and then it goes through a hole. He walks off screen and he goes into many costumes. It's quite a nice. Nice scene, nicely produced scene. One right? of one of Bene, 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 Benedict's yeah. uh, skill sets, though. He's very good at the um, swift accent changes. Yeah. He is one of the good actors of our generation. Mm. So, yeah. So, basically, his plan is, is that he'll go into casinos all around the world. He'll take money from them and bank uh, wire them to John Winston, which is the accountant for his dad and his dad's dad. Dave Patel again. Yeah, and then uh, that'll be through Switzerland, though. And oh, uh, they get $120 million, I think, in one year. Yeah, yeah, and they set up a bunch of hospitals around the world and orphanages, and yeah. they do good things. And they're not crap hospitals, they're good ones. Yeah. Did you mention, like, a, um, a makeup, uh, fancy dress, costume guy in the movie? Yeah, he gets mentioned um, At the after end. his death. Yeah. yeah. He's written up a bit more in the, in the book. It's actually a bit more... Um, stretched out a bit so yeah henry died 63 21 hospitals mm. and uh he's got this like but a pose montage that happens as well that's quite nice through the yeah. different scenes and um winston phones winston phones dal is the last scene basically going yeah will you write the story of uh yeah, yeah. henry sugar the Dahl's initial reaction is yeah it sounds bloody boring <laughs> yeah yeah but uh but he convinces him yeah, and this and this book is then written as a true story. Yeah, meta end. Yeah, and uh, it, it's one of the most pleasurable things I've had to. I'm not going to say endure, to, but 
experience as as part of this whole thing. This is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. wow. oh wow! Yeah. Well, it's not. It it's quite different. It it may be unfair at times to compare a short movie like this because it's snappy and punchy. Um, but yeah, I, what I like about it is is the difference of it. Like, I, there isn't that many different genres out there. I don't, not to say that this is on its own genre, but it, it's conducted very differently from a long form film. Yeah, and sometimes you just want a short movie. <laughs> you do, you do. Um, and when it's visually as stunning as this and uh, yeah, but does every, punchy. Everything, everything about this, even though it's punchy and it keeps you, you know, revved up, it's all very wholesome as well. Though, because it's rolled out, you know, the, the moral is always a good thing and the good guy always wins. Um, so it's a happy thing. Nothing bad happens in it. It's... You know, people die, but you don't really care. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 a lovely story because it's rolled out again. Yeah, and it's a it's a all encapsulating short story. Yeah, uh, yeah. Doesn't it's... doesn't have to make a whole heap of sense. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like plot wise, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be rating it as much as you, sort of because of a short movie. But it's plot wise, I was I gave it three point five out of five, just to um, I think it's good i think it's good i think it's it's delivered well and it's got the onion layer skin peel layers of the narration and i was happy with it i i went with a four um yeah. it, it's a good story it's it's rolled down everything rolled down is written I, I i'd never actually heard of this before um but everything i've read of rolled down i've read a few recently because i've got two young kids so i've been reading them rolled down like um Danny Champion of the World, the most recent one I read. Mm. Twit, Twitter when they were a bit younger. Uh, the Twitters, oh, not the Twitter. The Twits. <laughs> not, mm. not Elon Musk. Um, no. <laughs> uh, the Twits. Um, I love all the stuff I've read of his, especially recently with the kids. Uh, this, amazing. Just as good as everything I've read in the past. Yeah. 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 Um, acting, I, I gave three out of five. I'm just I'm, I'm happy with it. It was, I think, the speed of the narration sort of dilutes the acting quality a little bit in my mind. Uh, it's obviously still good acting. It's three out of five acting, but I just feel like in the very, very rapid pace of it, it's, it's, you lose a little bit, but then you obviously have great performances all around. But I don't think it's four, in my opinion. See, I went with four again, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. No, that's good. Uh, and mostly because of a couple of little... I don't, uh, Benedict was very good and his rapid transition between characters in one of the scenes was l- well done. But then Kingsley, uh, his little nervous twitches towards the <laughs> the fort wall. Yeah. Just so nice. Um, I, uh, again, I just love everything he does. Uh, Dev Patel, fantastic. Uh, Moss. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, good. Very good. Yeah. Um, so basically, there is no hardly any music in this movie. So sound brackets track. You got to look at the sound. Like I, I basically just gave it two point five because there's no there's no soundtrack to this movie. Like they, the credits roll to silence. There's a little bit of incidental classical music at the times. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, apparently, mm-hmm. uh, but it it doesn't really do much. It doesn't no. have to. No, it doesn't have to, and you know, the but... heavy lifting is all the non-stop narration. Like music would be lost anyway. Yeah, and I think it's going along the lines of being a stage show, and you don't get yeah. that in a stage show. So yeah, but I gave it two point five because you know that's just the way it is. Yeah, two two point five here as well. If we were to perhaps be a little bit kinder, we'd give it a weighted overall part of the score. But let's not bother with that. No, um, two point five is spot on. You know, it, it doesn't take yeah. away, it doesn't add. Me. No, and like obviously the sound throughout is fine. There's no real special effects sound or anything like that. It's just the sound is fine, but there is no sound. Track. Sound is narration, and and, and to be honest, the, they have all great voices for narration. Yeah, and I'd take this over the soundtrack of Metroland any day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd take a punch in the groin several times before. Uh... <laughs> The soundtrack on Metro Land any day. <laughs> yeah. So um, production, I give four out of five because it's 
good. And he basically knew he was going to do, okay, we're just going to do rapid changes, rapid scenery changes, we're going to have everything quite colorful, just like all my other movies. Yeah. And I think he made some good choices and he followed the story very um, truthfully. And he went along with the sort of the way the writing is done in the story. And he just went with that and he said, okay, let's break the fourth wall throughout this movie. And yeah, that's good. Oh, he lean, leans into it. I, I go at 4.25. Um, yeah, uh, as you say, it's I give it a little bit extra just because it, it's kind it's kind of unique. It's not really something I'd seen before. Not this level of it. It's not. Yeah, you know, I've seen Deadpool, but this isn't that. <laughs> no. Yeah, but it's a different way of breaking the fourth wall. It's the narration is done by each sub part of the movie's main character, and that's just great in my eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Guardian. Uh, Peter Bradshaw gave it 60 out of 100. He said, at 37 minutes long, its brevity perhaps exposes or even creates a flimsiness in his signature style that in a longer film mm. would have more space to breathe and parade itself. Um, Interesting. That, yeah. I dis- disagree. I think the brevity actually adds to it, but could be wrong. Yeah, well, Zan Brooks, I uh, just want to read the other one, he gives it 60 out of 100 as well, also from The Guardian. Mm. He says, Anderson's short, sweet, neatly managed production follows the original tale pretty much to the letter, so it kind of agrees with with my uh, observation. Yeah. Up at the very top of the thing, RogerEbert.com, Glenn Kenny gave it 100. Oof. He said, it's disarming and lovely to see a spiritual growth parable rendered in Anderson's jewel box style. His delivery here is not willfully eccentric, but gorgeously centered form underscores content in Henry Sugar in a most delightful way. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, hundreds a bit much for anything, but yeah. You don't like hundreds. It, nothing is perfect. No. God damn it, nothing is. Not even me. No. All right, so let's uh, unvisualize the wonderful tale or story. What is that wonderful story of Henry Sugar? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, get that and we'll from just, our... We're just in underneath the length of the movie. <laughs> our 31 minutes, and which, is, which is fine. So uh, we will randomly select our next movie right now. And it is movie 3059. Not bad. All right, this movie 3059 is The Blind Swordsman Zatochi. Oh, yeah, that one. The Blind Swordsman colon Zatochi. <laughs> That's um, dangerous to have, have a blind swordsman near your colon. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so this is from 2004. It runs for an hour and 56 minutes. The summary is director Takeshi Kitano takes on Japanese cinematic legend Zatochi. Kitano stars as the blind wanderer with a distinctive red cane and a shock of platinum blonde hair. Softly spoken, he makes a living as a masseur and by gambling, but his humble shuffling facade masks a lightning fast, deadly swordsman. With so, noise. Yeah, just like um, Imdad can. Oh, yeah. It's the same guy, only he's a, an assassin. Yeah. I think it's our first. Japanese movie. Yeah, we've had Korean. We've had Korean, we've had Indian. Yeah, yeah. We've had Spanish. Italiano. Uh, it's South American with uh, Brugera, the bone woman. Oh, gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's, um, um, yeah, kind of, I like I like Japan, I like Japanese stuff, I like... Um, oh, I love Japanese sword, uh, movies. Swords play, yeah. So this yeah. one has a meta score. style. Yeah, this one has got a meta score of 75 and a user score of 7.2. So hopefully we get something that's enjoyable and entertaining to watch. Okay. Happy days. Happy days indeed. So join us then for episode 43 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. If you haven't already, follow us on TikTok for some of our favorite and least favorite scenes of the, of movies we've watched. Follow us and subscribe and whatever on YouTube, Spotify, every other audio podcast platform. There exists. We are on it. <laughs> and if we're not on it, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, for sure. You shouldn't stop using it. We're everywhere. We've even got a WordPress blog. So if you <laughs> are stuck in the 90s or the early 2000s and you just want to read a blog, 
15k random movie review. Or geocities. WordPress.com. Yeah, we've got a MySpace page. <laughs> Bebo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, which, um, yeah, and an Instagram account and all that rest. I've given up on threads because uh, nobody cares about threads. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you on episode 43. Look forward to that Japanese movie, The Blind Sword, Mizutochi. Bye bye. Bye bye.